Hello guys, Winston here. Carbon fiber is one of those materials that looks really cool, has some ridiculously awesome mechanical properties, and can kill you if you work with it incorrectly. I mean, maybe not like outright murder you like a table saw might, but the fibers can cause some really nasty skin irritation, the dust can inflame your respiratory system, and debris caused by machining can also short circuit your CNC because carbon is conductive. In the context of hobby machining, carbon fiber is a fairly exotic material, but it's also one that a good number of people have machined successfully before with proper safety precautions. And since I wanted to join that cool kids club, I decided to come up with a project as an excuse to buy some carbon fiber. The inspiration for this project comes courtesy of my maker knife. Ever since I started carrying it on my person, I've become obsessed with how I would want to make a product like this. The kinematics of the locking mechanism, the material selection, trade-offs in form versus function, the balance of ergonomics and comfort. But that end goal must wait, because I haven't yet worked out how I would do my own take on a locking mechanism, I don't have access to comparable manufacturing capabilities like a wire EDM, and quite frankly, I don't have the time to go through that entire design exercise just yet. However, I have seen these little 3D printed doohickeys that hold a utility blade, and they're actually kind of clever in how they use the plastic as an integrated locking mechanism and keep the blade captured by a dovetail. What I don't like about these is that they're kind of awkward to use one-handed, and this particular model is unnecessarily chunky, but really these are minor complaints. All of these 3D printed wannabe EDC trinkets are obviously light duty devices to be used very occasionally but they will still open a box just fine which covers 99% of what people need these things for anyway. And the best part is that a compact knife like this will unconditionally fit in the iPod Nano pocket of my pants, which on some of these pants will not properly accommodate my Maker Knife Plus sheath. And yes, I realize that my predicament is still quite merciful compared to the meager choices for pocketed pants faced by women on a daily basis, this is definitely a first world men's problem, but I still want to undertake this as an exercise to distill the design of a utility knife down to its simplest possible elements. So let's try to put a subtractive twist on the minimalist utility knife. The most important starting point for a CAD design like this is to have a model of a utility blade to work around. I want to design something that conforms to the blade as tightly as possible. Via Thingiverse, I found a drawing of the original Stanley utility blade design and replicated that in Fusion 360. From that model, I can project and offset the blade's profile by a couple tenths of a millimeter to create the bounds of my handle. Just like with the Maker Knife, I actually like exposing the blade at an angle when it's extended. That presents a little more usable cutting edge instead of a face that's perpendicular to the blade's cutting edge. Next, I can model in the detents to hold the blade at the required positions for cutting and storage. My concept of operations for this knife is for the user to pinch the blade to the handle during cutting since I can't machine in a dovetail or flexible integrated locking mechanism into this piece. Okay, that's kind of a lie. I could machine in a dovetail if I added in some features for clearance, but I really don't want to. And also, depending on the orientation of the carbon fiber weave that you use, you could plausibly develop a flexible live hinge type mechanism for locking a blade in place but this being my first carbon fiber project, I didn't want to get too fancy too fast. To ensure my blade stays in position when it's not being pinched to the handle, I will use magic. I mean, magnets. To move the blade forward or backwards, I'll have a cutout in the back to allow you to pop the blade out of the detents and away from the magnets. And to ensure that the blade snaps into the locking detents easily, I'll create cutouts to eliminate sharp internal corners and strategically chamfer the edges. Now, cam is where I had a brief moment of self-doubt. Even though this was predominantly geometry that could be machined with 2.5D techniques, I still wasn't quite sure what I would do for speeds and feeds. I did recall at some point someone telling me to aim for feed rates similar to what you would use for aluminum, but I didn't want to take my exact aluminum cutting recipe and apply that to carbon fiber. I tend to aim for a shallow cut with high feed rates. It gives me a lot of room to increase or decrease feed rate to adjust how much stress I'm putting on the spindle, or how much force is being kicked back into my CNC. But carbon fiber is pretty abrasive, so if I only cut with the bottom quarter millimeter of my end mill, I'll be wasting a lot of the tool. So to figure out my feed rates, I'm using a placeholder eighth inch end mill with two flutes, and I targeted a little over one thou per tooth or two thou per rev, and I went with a depth of cut of one millimeter. I said I would go with aluminum friendly feed rates, I didn't mean I would go with aluminum depths of cut as well. 
I assumed that carbon fiber would yield a little more easily than aluminum, so I cut deeper than I would if I were cutting metal. The mixed units, by the way, is because I'm using stock that's 3mm thick, so that will divide into three relatively even step-downs in my roughing toolpath. I'm not actually going to be using a two-flute end mill, however. I'm using a carbide burr-type cutter that you might use for cutting fiberglass or other composites. The idea with these is that they'll distribute the cutting action over a lot of little teeth. But instead of trying to calculate chip load per tooth, I am aiming for an amount of feed per revolution. Later on in this project, Ryan over at Elevated Materials gave me some advice on machining carbon fiber, since his business revolves around this stuff. He pointed me to the Amana speeds and feeds chart, which he reported was pretty spot on. So, with an approximate feed rate selected, I began applying toolpaths. First, an adaptive roughing toolpath to open up the 1mm deep pocket in my knife handle. This was restricted to operate primarily within the outline of my handle, since adaptive slotting around the perimeter of shapes is quite slow. You're much better off using a contour toolpath with generous stock to leave to isolate your model from the rest of the stock. Once you have that clearance, a pocket or horizontal toolpath can be used to clean up the flat areas on your model. Note that on the open side of the main recess, the toolpath goes over the edge of the handle. This is why we need that material around the perimeter to be cleared away first. I'll bevel the detents and break some of the edges with a 45 degree chamfer cutter. Then I'll sub in a two flute end mill to clean up the walls. I found that burr style cutters tended to leave horizontal streaks on the walls. So for such a short cleanup toolpath, I'll accept the tiny bit of wear and tear that this will subject my normal 8th inch end mill to. Regular end mills are also easier to clean off if you get some adhesive on them, which will happen when I break through the onion skin which I've been keeping since the first operation. And lastly, since I have a lot of internal corners on my handle, I need to open them up so my sharp cornered utility blades can drop in. Alright, toolpaths are done, onward to the garage. I'm going to be using a generous amount of double-sided tape to secure my carbon fiber to my wasteboard, ensuring 100% coverage underneath where my part will be machined. And if you're wondering why there's a suspicious looking cutout in my stock already, it's because everything I talked about with regards to the design and cam already incorporated lessons learned from the first machined prototype. For tooling, I'm starting with this burr type cutter marketed as a router bit for fiberglass on McMaster. And because of that, you really won't be sure what brand you're getting until it arrives, but you can also find similar cutting tools from desktop CNC favorites like Amana Tool. This style cutter is actually not that exotic. And Ryan also dropped me another recommendation for some cheap tools that he said punch way above their price class, so if you're looking for an inexpensive way to test the waters of carbon fiber machining, maybe don't immediately write off some of the more generic looking tools on the market. With my cutter installed, I hooked up my dust boot and I connected it to my vacuum in the most direct way possible to minimize losses. The vacuum I'm using is the Rigid NXT 14 gallon wet dry vacuum, which I mentioned in my last video as a product I picked by unforced choice when Home Depot approached me about providing tools for a project. For about $100 sporting a 6 horse motor and the ability to move 160 CFM, this was one of the more powerful units I could find. In fact, I can count on one hand the number of more capable vacuums Home Depot sells, and they're all by rigid. But CFM is only one side of the equation. I also needed something with a HEPA rating, because carbon fiber dust is nasty stuff. And here, Rigid offers a specialized bag and filter specifically for jobs that need that HEPA rating, the VF6500. It drops into any 12 to 16 gallon vacuum, and it has a pretty interesting toroidal construction to maximize surface area. That solves my dust issue, but there's one more factor to consider. If you have suboptimal speeds and feeds and you start heating up the carbon fiber as you're cutting, the resin inside it can start off-gassing some pretty funky things. So even through a HEPA filter, it's a good practice to keep your workspace well ventilated. Some people will say you can submerge carbon fiber in water to sequester the dust, and that is true, but it is a little messy. Just like water jets and plasma tables, when a splash of dirty water lands all over your CNC and evaporates, that dust that you just collected will once again be liberated. So if you can do a good job keeping airborne particles in check, I would personally opt to machine carbon fiber entirely dry. Anyhow, the toolpaths that I made for my fiberglass bit ended up working just fine. And really, I think it's actually pretty easy to make a toolpath that will cut carbon fiber. What's harder is making a toolpath that will cut carbon fiber reliably in a way that maximizes tool life. Next up, I swapped in a Datron 8th inch chamfering tool because it comes to a perfect point. 
This means I can duck into all the small corners and features in my model while using a very small tip offset. Then I swapped in an 8th inch 2 flute, Carbide 3D's 102 end mill. I basically have an unlimited supply of these. That cleaned up the walls and left a better finish than the burr end mill could. And then a 132nd inch end mill through boring and rest machining toolpaths cleaned up the corners of my utility knife handle. To clean up everything that remained, I sanded the outer edges up to 400 grit. This was done in front of my vacuum hose and while wearing gloves because that dust has an effect very similar to fiberglass. I used a drop of CA glue to secure my magnets into the handle, and boom, my ultra-minimalist carbon fiber utility blade holder was complete. Within a couple minutes of playing around with it, I found it to be not all that difficult to deploy single-handed, and it does so in a way that's surprisingly not irritating. I thought it would be a lot more finicky to use. Now this is of course a result of some iteration. On the first prototype, I found that the magnets would try to center the blade to them, so I moved the magnets as close to the bottom as I could. I also noticed that the locking detents were spaced too far apart on the first prototype, so combined with the fact that they weren't originally chamfered, the edge of the blade would sometimes get caught on them. And the original utility blade holder's two magnets were insufficient to secure the blade when dropped. The holding force was concentrated along the lower half of the blade, so it was easy for the top half to pull away on impact and compromise the holding strength of the magnets. There was however no real risk to me of the blade coming loose in my pocket because it takes a pretty sharp impact to make that blade pull away. But the more I use this thing, the more I think I might actually be able to get away with legitimately using it as my everyday carry knife. It's shockingly light and compact, and it opens up Amazon packages with ease, which is really all you need when you work in a pretty well-equipped machine shop. And if I want to abuse the utility blade as a scraper, or use it on its own for some other reason, it's incredibly easy to pop the blade out. What originally started out as a really simple experiment and an excuse to machine carbon fiber might end up being one of my favorite and most well-used objects that I've made recently. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I want to thank the Home Depot for providing the rigid products I use to keep me safe for this project. Special shout out to everyone on Patreon who makes it so I don't need to think twice about impulse buying sheets of carbon fiber for projects like this. All of my patrons will have access to the fusion files for this project. I'll be back soon with more CNC projects and DIY nonsense.